Well, hello, friends and neighbors. We're back again with another episode of whatever. Another episode of let's have a beer and fuck around with Arduino. So this is a trick I picked up from a fellow in Denmark by the name of Jesper Eklund. And I put a link to his blog down below. So sometime last year, I had to figure out how to use a 12 pole rotary switch to send a signal into that. And after doing the clickety click, came across Jesper Eklund's blog spot blog. This is how you know these guys are Danish. Hey Jesper, talk for that smart trick. And he's illustrated a brilliant way to optimize a switching scenario that reduces the number of I.O. connections of an N-way switch like this to one analog pin. Here's the scenario. You've got an Arduino Uno or similar or whatever and say a pile of things that you want to be able to switch through, whether those are functions or sensor reading inputs from other things. I don't know. At the end of the day, it's all I.O., right? So the problem is Mama Pig has only so many teats to go around. And I went the extra mile today and got the heat shrink on here. But in a corporate environment, you don't really want to be breaking out a lighter and doing the old hand melt job. There's a couple schools of thought on uh, proper heat shrinkage. Uh, a, use the right tool, which would be a, a heat gun. Shrinkage has been achieved. That seems pretty good to me. It makes it look better too, like a hacker didn't slap it together, such as myself. So in my case, I want to be able to fire specific function at the turn of the dial. I'm gonna use ground, power, and one analog input to do it all, and 12 resistors. Now, as you've probably guessed if you've been following along at home, this method is essentially voltage division, uh, conversely additive resistance. I've got 12 poles on my switch, so I need 12 resistors of matching value lined up like boxcars. Each pole of the switch connects to the current path between the resistors, and the corresponding voltage drop for that switch position will appear accordingly. So when you're doing this, pro tip, what you want to do is figure out where on this switch is going to be your number one position. You get to choose. Number one pole is going to connect to the positive side of Ichiban Resistaru. And in my case, Ichiban Resistaru is... This red wire is my numero uno. I got five volts on the bottom, and I got ground at the top here. And then in order, each wire from the switch. And when I say number one, I really mean number zero. Because that way the switch statement inside the code, it's going to line up with the voltage drop of the resistors divided by how many resistors are involved with the circuit, blah, blah, blah. You'll soon figure out whether your switch is wired backwards or not. In that case, just uh, reverse the polarity of the current. At each detent point, you're changing the resistance of the circuit. Okay, so if that's clear as mud, then uh, take a look at Jasper's schematic. I've put a link down below. Uh, here's the code. So nothing fancy going on here. The first interesting thing in the code I think is this. The uh, divider equals 1024 divided by the number of steps. Number of steps being 12. So 1024, what is that? The short answer is that number represents 5 volts. Actually, 1023 represents 5 volts. Another way to look at it is each analog pin is capable of reading 1024 different values. So if you're using the 3.3 volt pin rather than the 5, that's roughly half of 5 volts, so the ADC range would top out at 512. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's that's what's going on here. So whenever you're looking at values from an analog input in your console, raw values, that's voltage as converted by the analog to digital converter. There's no way for the computer to display a value unless it converts the value from analog to digital. The thing that converts analog to digital is a thing called an ADC, analog to digital converter. It lives somewhere on this. I don't know where. I don't know. I, I think this is pretty interesting because you can calculate the voltage. Uh, but you've got to do a little math first. It's not hard. I'll show you that in a second. But before that, let's fire up this beast and see what she does. Well, enough chatter for God's sakes. Let's plug this bitch in. Uh-oh. Wires coming loose. Left and right. Motherfucker. Alrighty, Roo. Here's the console. 9600 baud. And we're going to start twisting the switch knob. Jesus H. Christ, when she rains, she pours. Switch. Twist. 11, 10, Go nine, back up eight, the other direction here. 10, 11, 12. Now we're gonna hit one. 
And as you know, if you've been watching these videos for any length of time, we are trying to build a spaceship in the garage. Super luminal speeds will be achieved, and we're gonna need a navigation computer to do that. And clickety click, kablamo. When I go to number three detent on the switch, I get a nice LED light up. That's just to illustrate that you can fire signals back out of the board. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I wanna show you this voltage thing. So we're gonna uncomment this line. We're gonna print the voltage variable. So we'll upload this mofo. Oh, it takes so long. Look at this. Come on, for Christ's sake. What are we looking at here? Whatever voltage is coming through the wire needs to get converted to a number. So that's a digital process. And as I switch, going around the horn, voltage goes up, resistance is going down. What we want to do is figure out what the voltage is. Okay, it's really, really easy. So in this case, what we're messing around with is a ratio between the representation of voltage. Five volts is 1023. So the ratio looks like this. 1023 over five equals the number that you're seeing on the console over X. So let's go with uh, 255. That was the last one I can remember. 255 is the number converted by the ADC. X is going to be our voltage. If you've ever done like um, aspect ratio conversions for video by hand, that's where I'm coming from. Uh, any kind of ratio conversions, um, trying to find the percentage of something, this is that thing. 5 times 255. Oh, sorry about that. I had to go let the dogs out. Yeah, and use a calculator. 5 times 255 is 1275 equals 1023x divided by that. And x equals, time to use the calculator, 1.24 volts. So yeah, you basically uh, crisscross applesauce divided by uh, the numerator and you get your voltage. Uh, and Bob's your uncle. Well, I'm sure I could have explained that a lot simpler, but it's rough, but there you go. So the last trick I'm going to show you here is a super quick and dirty way to call a function once after you've called it in a main loop, such as you have in Arduino land, the main loop, it gets called uh, repeatedly as fast as the processor can roll. You're going to need two global variables to do this, and I've called mine last selected and this selected. And just a couple of bytes or ints will do, set them to zero. Uh, and what these do is we're going to store whatever the current selection is, the number of the detent that we're at on the switch, and we're also going to store the last last one that we switched and we'll do a comparison. Every time this loop is called you set the last selected to equal the currently selected then you update the currently selected to the actual value coming off the wire. Now you know where you were and where you are and down here in our case in our switch statement or if else or whatever you're gonna use for your logic if the last selected item does not equal the current selected item then do something. Go in here and run this code. Nothing else happens. I don't have an else statement. There's a break. Unelegantly, I have this in each of my cases, but there could be a number of different things that I need to do in each case. Well, there you have it. I hope you found this helpful, and uh, if you've got a better way to do things, go ahead and drop them down below. I'd love to have a cogent discussion about global variables in Arduino, or what have you. If you've got a better way to do this, fantastic! Show me the way. And if you've got alternate ways to get lots of inputs through one or two wires, love to hear about it. Thanks for watching.